Many of you, many of you have been struggling with pain recently. And it's tiring. It's really tiring. But it's not the pain of a sprained ankle. It's not the pain of a toothache. Your pain, your pain is the pain of the soul. It's an emotional pain, a psychological pain that grips your heart and grips your mind tightly and it won't let go. It's as though a monkey has jumped on your back and dug its claws deeply into your flesh. And this demon monkey puts its claws into your heart, it puts its claws into your mind, and it won't let go. Lots of us, lots of us have this experience of having the monkey demon jump on us. We'll be perfectly fine one moment, and the next moment, with perhaps no warning at all, the claws will dig in. The claws will dig in, and we know the monkey's back. And he's riding us, and he's tormenting us, and we don't know why. Your monkey is not my monkey. And we will experience our demons differently. For some of you, for some of you, there's an explosion of anger the instant the monkey lands on your back. You hate it, and you fear it, but there's nothing you can do as his claws pierce your soul. For others of us, instead of anger, we find ourselves overwhelmed with a bitterness, deep bitterness that's excruciatingly painful. There are some who have a monkey demon that brings fear. An overpowering darkness that prevents them from doing all kinds of normal things. Perhaps your monkey curses you with jealousy, or maybe with envy, or hate, or greed, or pride that suddenly overflows for no apparent reason. So I have a strong word for you today about this monkey. And I pray that you will see this as a, a loving word that will set you free. So please, please, I beg, please allow God to speak to your heart. And then we'll break the chain. The first bit of good news this morning is that you are not responsible for this monkey. This demon that has its claws in you and won't let go, you're not responsible for it. You didn't create the monkey. But you're the one who made the chain that's around its neck. The other good news today is that God has given you the power to break that chain and get the monkey off your back. If the monkey on your back is not a result of something that you did, then where did it come from? You have been deeply sinned against by someone, or maybe even by lots of people. They've hurt you. They've hurt you once. They've hurt you many times. They've betrayed you and they have insulted you. Terrible, terrible injury has been done to you. 
once or often over the course of many years by someone who ought to have loved you, by someone who ought to have cared for you. The sin and the wickedness of that other person, those other people, whoever they are, that created the monkey, the demon that has its claws deep in your back. The result of their wickedness, even if you never knew that it was wickedness, was that you began to have deep, deep hidden feelings, feelings of resentment, of anger, of bitterness, of fear, etc., etc. And your feelings, those feelings, they are completely justified. And then you feel emboldened by your ability to hate the person who sinned so terribly against you. You might feel self-righteous, or you may be extremely afraid. The father of psychoanalysis, Sigmund Freud, seems to have been correct when he said, the mind will return again and again to that which gives it pain. That's the start of the chain. Each time you return, consciously or subconsciously, to the cause of the pain, you strengthen the chain that keeps the monkey on your back. You're trapped. You are trapped and the only way to break the chain is to stop thinking about it. You have to let go of the anger and you have to let go of the resentment. But whenever you try, you can't do it. You cannot. The monkey leaps back on. The monkey digs in his sharp claws every time something triggers the memory of the great wrong that has been done to you. The things that can trigger, can be a trigger for you, there's vast in number, they are various in nature. It may be a smell that triggers your anger because that smell is associated with the sin done against you. It may be just a tone of voice or an attitude maybe a person of a certain age. For all of us, for all of us, the trigger is personal. It can be very hard to identify, and often it seems illogical until the root of the trigger has been revealed. Only God can help you now. But in order for God to help you and release the monkey, breaking the chain that ties him to you, you must do something. You must do something. To understand the solution to the monkey problem, let's read Colossians chapter 3 and verse 13. It says, Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. And here is today's hard teaching. You must forgive. It's God's instruction to you. And in faith, we are to obey our Lord's orders. We must forgive the people who sinned so grievously against us that they put an evil monkey on our backs. Does our Father, our Heavenly Father, really say we must forgive these evil people who caused such hardship and pain and suffering for so long? When Jesus told his disciples to pray, he told them to say, forgive us our sins, 
as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And then Jesus explained to them in Matthew chapter 16, 6 and verse 15, that failing to do this would have terrible consequences for you. If you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. As long as we cannot forgive the evil done to us, our Father will not forgive us our evil. And so the monkey will continue to torture us. You may complain to me, justifiably, that you cannot forgive. You may grumble and you may murmur that I don't understand how deserving of your resentment is the person, the people, who ruined your life. The problem isn't that you cannot forgive. The real problem here is that you fail to understand how much you have been forgiven already by Jesus. Jesus told a story that explains this problem. So it would be good if you turned to Matthew 18. And starting at verse 21, read the parable of the unforgiving debtor, or sometimes called the unmerciful servant. It's a story of forgiveness that starts with Peter boasting that he can forgive the person who sins against him seven times. And Jesus telling him it has to be 70 times seven. That means your forgiveness has to be unlimited, beyond counting and beyond measuring. Jesus then describes the kingdom of heaven as a place where the king forgives the huge debts of his people. And Jesus deliberately in this story makes the debts so large that they would have been impossible to repay. And then Jesus tells of one who had been forgiven by the king and is now refusing to forgive a much smaller debt. And when the king sees this, he calls back his servant and he says, you evil servant, I forgave you that tremendous debt. And he tells the man he should have copied that behavior and forgiven others with much smaller debts. And then the angry king sent the man to prison to be tortured until he had paid his entire debt. That's what my Heavenly Father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and your sisters from your heart. Your monkey will stay on your back, torturing you with endless pain, causing you to lose control for as long as you don't forgive. Not just once but over and over and over again. The starting place for us, our starting place is to know how much we have been forgiven by the king. We somehow, somehow we need to be so overwhelmed by this that we praise God from the very core of our soul. The hate, the anger, the bitterness, the resentment, the envy, the jealousy, the fear that is eating away at you inside will continue as long as you refuse to forgive whoever caused this. And the place you enter once you truly forgive the one who sinned against you is a place of peace a place of calm and love and joy. You will enter into the presence of the Lord and you will bathe in his glory. 
think deeply and think seriously about how much you have been forgiven. Dwell on it. Praise God for his mercy. Meditate on his forgiveness so that it soaks into you. The next step is to be honest. Honest about the lingering resentments that just clinging to your soul. Be honest. Think about your abuser, the parent, the friend, the stranger, who callously and cruelly hurt you, and release the poison of bitterness in Jesus' name. Let it out. Let it flow away. Talk to Jesus. Tell him you don't want it. And then Jesus will set you free. But you have to go all the way in forgiving. Don't stop your forgiving before it's completed. You cannot say you're ready to forgive, but you'll never forget what evil was done to you. That kind of limited forgiveness is of small use and it won't set you free. God, who washes away the sin from your life, can also, he can also remove the memories. So let that sit in your heart. Go back to the first point and try again. Remember that the monkey will cling to you, bound by chains until you forgive and forget. When God says, you must forgive or else, it's because he loves you. And he hates the demon monkey that is ruining your life. The poison in the claws of that demon monkey, that poison is killing you. The third and the last thing to do is to implore God to help you forget. You have accepted that it is your job to forgive and you want to forgive and God is eager to help and he will accept his responsibility to help you forget. In this partnership, you do the possible and God will do the impossible. Joseph named his son, his older son, Manasseh, for he said, God has made me forget all my troubles and everyone in my father's family. God made Joseph forget, and God will make you forget, so that later, later you will be ready to gladly bless the person who sinned against you. The monkey will be gone, the chain will be removed, the sin forgotten, and you will be free to live life to the full. This is the fourth law of spiritual success. And I pray that you will practice this law diligently. The fourth law of spiritual success is remember to forget. Hallelujah. Thank you. Let's pray.